Nathan WhatsApp. I appreciate you joining us with uh, that take. Let's go across to Mukesh Bhutani, managing partner, BMR Legal. He joins us. Now, Mukesh, appreciate you joining us. You know, you were listening in to what Justice Shah and the Revenue Secretary had to say uh, right here on CNBC TV 18 with us. What do you make of the fact that the government is not willing to disclose the contents of the report? You heard Justice Shah saying that it's dependent on the government, it's the onus of the government on when it wants to release the report. The government saying, well, we will take a decision shortly, we're not committing ourselves to a timeline, but also suggesting that perhaps a decision could be taken in the next 10 to 11 days, which is when the Castleton matter comes up in the Supreme Court. Well, Shirin, uh, I mean, it's really, uh, you know, uh, at the discretion of the government as to when they want to make the report public. Uh, I, I, I think they will certainly make it public. Uh, so I will not get into this decision why they did not make it public immediately. But I think the next 10 days are very important because bear in mind that when the Supreme Court hears the matter on the 4th of August and assuming that this matter goes ahead, the law officer will have to defend the actions of the departmental officers uh, insofar as the uh, Castleton matter is concerned because uh, uh, because at the end of the day uh, the you know there's a whole lot of litigation uh, not just on the Castleton matter but also the interveners by way of individual FIRs and FIR association so if the government has to prepare its stance as to what they are going to talk in the Supreme Court uh, it will have to make sure that in the next 10 days it has absorbed the contents and also given a reaction uh, to the report because uh, the government will have to come out with a stand. Either the government can say uh, and assuming that the report is positive for the FIIs, either the government can say that we accept the report and we issued requisite clarification to clarify the position of law in line with the Shah Committee recommendations assuming it is positive or it can say, let the law take its own course, mm. this matter is before the Supreme Court, and let the Supreme Court take a final call. Either which ways, yeah. the law officers who are defending the government's position in the Supreme Court will then act accordingly. Yeah. Mukesh, let me uh, come in on that because my sense at this point in time, and of course, you know, as I've been pointing out, we're trying to read between the lines because there really is no information. But my sense at this point in time is that it's unlikely that we'll have a clarificatory circular being issued by the CBDT ahead of the Castleton matter being heard in the Supreme Court. Uh, is that your feeling as well? Well, it could be speculative, uh, Shirin, to comment uh, whether the government will issue the circular it's or not. It's all speculation. But it's all speculation, I reckon Mukesh. that given the... Yeah, but I reckon that given the fact that the government put out a uh, stance insofar as defending the amendment to the law is concerned and in a way indirectly defending the actions of the departmental officers who proceeded with the assessments of uh, FIIs by levying MAT, uh, it, they would rather prefer that let the Supreme Court lay down the law uh, mm. instead of issuing the clarifications. Because as you know, the government has already issued two clarifications, one in the context of applicability of uh, MAT on uh, FIIs who are a part of the treaty network, and second is... Right. Not, uh, advising the departmental officers not to proceed with any recovery proceedings. So I doubt if the government will come out with any further clarifications because whatever mm. they had to come out with to assuage the sentiments of FIIs, they have done. Of course, okay. it would be a welcome uh, thing if the government uh, uh, has to come out with a circular and assuming that the Shah panel report is positive and clarify that there is no question of yeah. levy of MAT which most people, including myself, believe is the right position of law. Absolutely. But Mukesh, uh, would you be disappointed if the committee, the Shah panel, sticks to only the levy of MAT on FIIs and doesn't look at the universe of foreign companies? Because that is the indication that we seem to have got from the press conference. And of course, the terms of reference very clearly stated FIIs, but you know, one was hoping that this would be a more holistic view, which, by the way, Justice Shah also said that the committee's unanimous view has been a holistic one. Absolutely. I think more than, uh, uh, you know, I don't think that there is anything uh, mandated that the panel should stick to its terms of reference. We have seen committees in the past that have gone beyond the terms of reference. 
I think the issue of levy of mat on foreign company itself is a vexed issue. Uh, the panel uh, which dealt with uh, the Castleton case, the panel dealt with principles uh, in the Timken case. Incidentally, both Timken and Castleton are not FIIs. It is only the differing interpretation that the advanced ruling authority had taken in both the cases that led to mat levy in the case of FII. So I think it will be right. in order uh, for the panel to deal comprehensively with the entire issue of mat on foreign companies and not necessarily stick to its mandate on FII's. Well, that's the hope. But Mukesh, uh, uh, please hold on because there's another matter that I would like your comment on and I'm just going to take our viewers through the details of that because the special investigative team, the SIT, has made a set of recommendations in a bid to try and stem the inflow of black money. Uh, the SIT report has raised a red flag on inflows from the Cayman Islands specifically. The team has suggested that the market regulator be brought into the picture to curb the usage of participatory notes to root black money. The report says that SEBI must obtain information on beneficial ownership of fee notes and this information should be in the form of individual KYC and not the name of a company. In case a company is the holder of a fee note, then SEBI must have information about its promoters and directors. Mukesh, I'm not sure if you've gone through the details of the SIT report, but if I could just get your comments specifically on the issue of fee notes because this is part of the, the recommendations that, uh, that the committee has made, the SIT has made on fee notes, and especially as far as the transferability of fee notes are concerned. I'm quoting to you from the report. It's it says P notes are transferable in nature. This makes tracing the true beneficial owner of P notes even more difficult since layering of transactions can be made so complex. SEBI needs to examine if this provision of allowing transferring of P notes is in any way beneficial for easing foreign investment. How would you read this and do you believe that we are going to see uh, a little bit of nervousness on the back of what the SIT has recommended specifically on stock markets and P notes? Well, Shirin, as you rightly pointed out, it's a recommendation of the SIT. Secondly, uh, you know, this is a part of the holistic mandate that the SIT has on the black money issue, and they have chosen in this report to pick up the P notes beneficial ownership. I have no doubt in my mind that world over, most regulators are now looking at strengthening the KYC norms for foreign institutional investors, and this will serve as a guidance to SEBI and the Ministry of Finance to relook at it. I think one has to tread very carefully on some of these recommendations because they may cause nervousness uh, in the markets. Uh, so if SEBI in its wisdom and the government decides to strengthen the KYC norms insofar as be, you know, identifying who the beneficial ownership of such P notes are, then that would be on a futuristic basis. So I think uh, it's, it's a recommendation uh, that's come in uh, based on what regulators all over the world are following. Uh, it also addresses the larger uh, BEPS action uh, task force, uh, which, which looks at beneficial ownership uh, in the context of taxability of income. So I think there's a whole lot of issues. There are tax issues. There are regulatory issues. There are capital markets mm. issues. But whatever the government does, it has to tread very, very carefully, and it needs to be mindful of the fact that there are currently certain KYC norms which are there in force, and there is an appropriate transition period that is given, otherwise it will result in nervousness in the market. Oh, most certainly it will, and as you pointed out, uh, it's a matter that needs to be dealt with sensitively. Uh, Mukesh, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18 with your take on both the mat panel report as well as the SIT report on black money which deals with recommendations for stock markets. Up next, Reliance Industries is on target with its first quarter numbers, gross defining margin.